kind of funny. Uh, my name is Jill and I'm here from the Green Bank Observatory and I am uh, one of your MCs today and I am also managing the live broadcast. Um, so I've got a lot of different screens here, a lot of different videos that we're getting tuned up for you. And it looks like we're at the top of the hour. So fingers crossed, everything is looking good. Everybody is streaming okay. And um, you've been seeing, hopefully, some of our folks here in the gymnasium. And um, we're live from the Green Bank Elementary Middle School and the Green Bank Observatory. So if you are here, you're probably familiar with Green Bank. If um, it's your first time, welcome. We're going to tell you all about ourselves, all about um, West Virginia and all of the amazing things that we do with science and technology. And so um, let me tell you what you're going to expect to see today. So uh, we have a series of videos explaining how this process works, how we're actually going to be making contact with the International Space Station using amateur radio technology. Um, we're also going to see some awesome videos um, that some special folks sent to uh, wish our students here at Green Bank Elementary School good luck. And I do want to let you know that Green Bank Elementary and Middle School is one of a handful of schools in the world each year that has the opportunity to talk to an astronaut on the International Space Station. So let's check in and see where the ISS is right now. So I'm going to get ready to share my screen and I am. Yeah, it looks like you all can see that. Um, this is a really cool software called gpredict. You can access it and use it for free um, as long as you're connected to the internet and you can put in different coordinates. So you can see when, from your location when the International Space Station is going to be passing overhead. And this is actually what we're gonna be using today so we can time it so that we'll uh, begin our radio communication to talk to the astronaut on the International Space Station as it passes overhead. So we'll come back to this and we'll check in on its location um, a few times today as we're going through our broadcast. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that screen. And let's see. So let me tell you a little bit more about Green Bank Elementary and Middle School. So it's located in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. And um, Pocahontas County is one of the largest counties east of the Mississippi River. It's actually 950 square miles. Um, the population's pretty low for such a big part of the country. Um, so because of this, the community is very, very tight knit. Everybody really knows everybody here. And many families have lived in the area for several generations. So the Green Bank Elementary and Middle School is actually pretty small. There's only about 200 students kindergarten through eighth grade in the school. Even though they're small, they are very mighty. Their mascot is the eagle. So we'll be seeing some eagles today. Um, and they do all the same things that kids do in schools all over the world. Uh, they love to be in clubs, play sports, travel. Uh, they're in 4-H, science fair, and they even have a pretty cool robotics club. So now here's something that we really want you to understand about today's contact. I'm going to get ready to share another picture here. So, I'm going to get this lined up for you. So, the Green Bank Observatory, which is next door to the school, is home of the Green Bank Telescope, and we'll be seeing this in the video that we're watching today. It's huge. It's one of the biggest radio telescopes in the world. However, this is not what we're using to talk to the International Space Station, so we don't want you to get confused there. What we're actually using is this very small radio antenna that we have on a boom outside of the gymnasium where the students are with all of their radio equipment. So just keep that in mind um, when you're thinking about the process that's happening today. Even though the Green Bank Telescope just happens to be here, located behind the school, that's just a coincidence. We're not using it to talk to the space station. We're actually using this amateur radio and any school can apply to do this. Any school can work with uh, local amateur radio experts and volunteers, can work with your science teacher, your school board, um, all the same type of people that we worked with to make this experience happen for you. So we just want to make sure that you understand that. Okay, 
So, um, well, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play some videos for you to let you see a little bit behind the scenes in this project, let you meet our students, and let the students um, themselves hear some pretty cool messages. I'm just going to go ahead and get this pulled up here. everybody. I hope you enjoyed that little peek behind the scenes to see what some of our work, our practices, and our rehearsals to get ready for today were like. Now we're going to watch some special greetings uh, to the students at the Green Bank Middle School. They're all tuning in and watching just like you are right now. Hello, my name is Julie Shiflett. I am principal at Green Bank Elementary and Middle School. We are excited for this opportunity that is so unique uh, for all of our students to participate and speak with the International Space Station. This team has worked tirelessly for our students to have this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. My name is Ann Smith. I'm the middle school science teacher for Green Bank, and I've had the exciting opportunity to be able to be involved in this project. I just started uh, this year into the school year. Miss Stacy Landis was our teacher last year, and she's the one that really spearheaded a lot of this. Um, so I'm excited to, to be able to take over and for the kids to be able to finish this project. They're, they're looking forward to it, and we all are. Hi, this is Karen O'Neill, director at Green Bank Observatory. I just want to tell you guys how excited I am that the students at the Green Bank Elementary Middle School are going to get this opportunity to reach out and talk to astronauts on the International Space Station. I know this has been an incredibly challenging year with the COVID pandemic, with illnesses, with remote school, quarantines, and all, all the things involved in that. And so I really want to congratulate you, the students, the teachers, and the members of the community that have worked so incredibly hard over this past year to make this opportunity happen. I really hope the students have a great time talking to the astronauts today. And I can't wait to hear what you guys learn in the conversations that you have. So congratulations all. Well, hello, Green Bank Middle School Eagles. This is your Senator, Shelley Moore Capito. I hope you are as excited as I am for your contact with the International Space Station today. West Virginia has such a great history of being at the center of our country's space exploration. Just last month, the Green Bank Observatory played a huge role in connecting us as the Perseverance rover landed on Mars. Kind of neat, huh? And continues to help guide Perseverance as the mission continues over 100 million miles away. I'm so proud that you are carrying on our tradition today, and I am confident that you will be great representatives of West Virginia. This is such a great opportunity and fantastic inspiration as, as you look forward to your 100 Who knows? Maybe one of the nest astronauts to explore space or maybe Mars or engineer who will design rocket ships or telescopes is right here in the room. The possibilities really are endless. I encourage you to chase those dreams and let me know if I can ever be of assistance. I'd like to spend a, 
send a special thank you to all the hardworking and dedicated staff at Green Bank Observatory and Green Bank Middle School for making today possible. And I hope your event is out of this world. Have fun. Hello, I'm United States Senator Joe Manchin, and hello to the students of Green Bank Middle School. We are very excited for you all to represent the state of West Virginia and students across the United States in your contact with the International Space Station. West Virginia is an important part of many projects studying the universe, from the Green Bank Observatory to NASA's Katherine Johnson facility and the many programs at West Virginia University. Today's opportunity was made possible because our statewide and national community wants you to succeed and for you to have every possible opportunity to make West Virginia and our entire country even better. I encourage you to continue your interest in STEM. Listen closely to your teachers and mentors and to work together with your classmates to learn the vital problem-solving skills that I promise will help you for the rest of your life, no matter what your endeavors may be. I truly appreciate the work of the volunteers and staff from the Green Bank Observatory and the Green Bank community along with the amateur radio community for supporting students in this project. So students, enjoy this once in a lifetime opportunity. Please accept my best wishes for what is sure to be a bright future. Thank each and every one of you and God bless you. Hello, my name is Setu Raman Panchanathan and I'm the director of the National Science Foundation. NSF is an agency that invests in scientists and engineers doing research across the whole country. And one of our most important facilities is the Green Bank Observatory, not far from Green Bank Middle School. I want to thank the volunteers and staff from the Green Bank Observatory and the Green Bank community, along with the amateur radio community for supporting this project. I'm so excited for you to represent the great state of West Virginia in your radio contact with the International Space Station. And I hope this project inspires you to continue learning about radio communications technology. I hope you will enjoy this once in a lifetime opportunity. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Now we're going to watch a video that explains what the amateur radio on the International Space Station is, ARIS for short, and how this whole process works how we use radio technology to make contact with the space station using an antenna as it passes overhead. Hi, my name is Ruth. And my name is Chris. You must be pretty excited to talk directly with astronauts on the International Space Station today. While we're waiting for the space station to come over your portion of the sky, let's talk a little bit about how it's going to happen. Of course, Mission Control is in contact with astronauts all the time, using a big radio with lots of fancy equipment. However, we're going to be using something very different today. We are going to use ham or amateur radio to talk directly to the International Space Station. When most people hear the word radio, they think of a music radio station. But it's so much more than that. Radio actually refers to the unseen energy that transmits all sorts of signals using electromagnetic waves. A portion of the sky. At first, people Let's learned how to send signals about how like going to happen. Code. And then they discovered that you can send so much more, like data, computer signals, and even TV. Maybe you don't realize it, but you use radio every day. Maybe you watched the TV this morning, or you texted your friends, or maybe even you check social media like Twitter or Instagram. Let's travel back to space for a minute. Since the beginning of the space age, humans have sent many spacecraft out into the universe. These range from the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting the Earth daily, and the Curiosity rover exploring Mars. We've even sent a long-distance messenger, the Voyager 1, who has traveled outside of our solar system. Whether it's capturing a great picture of a far-off galaxy or conducting experiments on the space station, Radio has to do with all of these. And today, you're going to be using ham radio. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is ham radio? Amateur or ham radio is a service and a hobby where operators can talk with people around their neighborhoods, their cities, their country, and even around the world. 
amateur radio operators require a radio license from the government. They're not that hard to get. I have one. My call sign is KM4LAO. And mine is KD8YVJ. Our call signs are a way of identifying who we are to other operators. This lets everyone know that we have the proper license to using the radios. As amateur radio operators, or hands as we are often called, we can talk with others about basically whatever we want often science or some new radio gadget that we are interested in. Let's focus back to the space station and your contact today. Many of the astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the space station are licensed ham radio operators. That's why your operators today can contact them. The people here, as well as the astronauts, are licensed to talk to each other and you are allowed to talk over to their radio. For our conversation today, we'll need an amateur radio station on the ground either in this location or somewhere else around the world. We'll also need a radio in the space station. NA1SS, NA1SS. You can hear the calls coming. This is November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, the International Space Station, over. On the space station, the radio transceiver is connected to an amateur radio antenna mounted on the outside. One of these antennas will be used today during our contact. For our side of the contact, we need a good-sized antenna, a signal amplifier, something to make our signal stronger, and a rotator for turning our antenna. We have to keep our antenna pointed right at the International Space Station. And remember, it's moving across the sky and fast. To aim the antenna properly, we need to track the path of the space station exactly. NASA uses complex systems to track the path of the space station and other orbiting objects. The satellite tracking program we are using works out a complicated set of mathematics to provide the orbital location of the space station moment by moment as it moves through space. This information is sent to the computer that controls the antenna rotator, which moves the antenna to follow the space station. Maybe some of you have seen or worked with robotics. That's pretty cool stuff. And just like you can program a robot where to go, what to do, and how to get there, you can also program a computer to tell an antenna how to track the space station across the sky. You know, it took a lot of planning to get this contact. Require a Several radio weeks ago, the, the Ares operations team had to figure out when the space station's orbit would pass over this location. That's pretty cool. Stuff. Then they had to and talk just with like the planners at NASA's Johnson where to Space go? Center. The cruise time is pretty full so they were able to find a time that could work for the crew members' schedules. Once they found times that would work both in space and here on the ground, the host organized this contact. And in just a few minutes, you'll be hearing and talking to the astronauts. Well, it's almost time for your contact. It will be exciting, so good luck with it! Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and let the students who are asking the questions introduce themselves. They're also gonna say whether or not they would like to be an astronaut on the International Space Station. I mean, myself, I might be a little anxious to be so far from home, but it would be pretty cool to see the Earth and the universe. Hi, my name is Olivia and I don't wanna be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Taylor and I think space would be too scary to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Willie, and I might then, want to be an astronaut. Just like you the can the I think it would be cool to be an astronaut. The cruise time is pretty full, so they were able to find a time that worked for the crew. Hi, my name is Ella, and I would not like to be Hi, my name is Kate, and I would like to Hey, everybody. Now we're going to go ahead and let the students who are asking bit. the questions introduce themselves. We're also schedule. going to say whether or not Once they, they would like to be sometimes that would work both international space station. I mean, myself, I might be a little anxious to be so far from home, but it would be pretty cool to see the Earth and the universe. Hi, my name is Olivia, and I don't want to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Taylor, and I think space would be too scary to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Willie, and I might want to be an astronaut. Hi, I'm Cadence, and I would think I think it would be cool to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Shayla, and I think it would be cool to be an astronaut, but I don't want to be. Hi, my name is Ella, and I would not like to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Kate, and I would like to be an astronaut. 
Hi, my name is Florian, and I would like to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Dylan, and I would like to be an astronaut. Uh, hi, my name is Griffin, and I would not like to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Allison. Um, I might want to become an astronaut whenever I get older. Hi, my name is Jade, and I would not like to be an astronaut. Hi, my name is Mackenzie. I think it would be cool to be an astronaut, but I don't want to be one. Uh, my name is Charlie, and I think it would be really, really cool to be an astronaut. Okay, everybody. So that was pretty fun. So we're going to just take a quick sneak peek at what things will look like in the gymnasium. Um, we have a, a couple of minutes until it's time. And so at that point, um, we will go on over to um, Amanda and the kids. And uh, Amanda is the manager of the Science Center. And um, she manages a great public outreach team and uh, a lot of folks from that team and a lot of folks from the observatory in general have been volunteering to help out with this project, which has been really great. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just say hello to some of the folks tuning in on Facebook. We're so excited that you're joining us. Um, thank you for sharing the post. Um, I see a friend from Norfolk. Um, I see some of our local friends here in Pocahontas County. So we're so glad that you're here and that you're excited to share this with us today. Um, before we go back over to the gym, I'm going to go ahead and just pull up the uh, ISS and we can see where it's at as we wait for it to get a little bit closer. Okay, actually, I'm going to pull that up after we go to Amanda. So we're going to be going to Amanda here in just a couple of minutes. Um, not a couple of minutes, actually, a minute and a half. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in today. We're so glad that you're sharing this with us. Um, we are live streaming on Facebook. The ARIS YouTube channel is also live streaming this broadcast. If you want to see what this experience was like for other schools, you can actually go to the ARIS YouTube channel and take a look at that. You see schools from all over the country, all over the world that are doing um, the same thing that we're doing here, talking to an astronaut on the International Space Station. So yeah, hello again to our Facebook friends. We're so glad that you're tuning in and you're sharing. We got friends from Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Columbus. Um, yeah, we've got a couple other schools tuning in and watching. Hi, thank you. We're so glad that you wanted to see uh, what these students are up to. Um, yes, there are actually a few websites. This came up as a question where you can track different satellites and the International Space Station. So the one we are using is called GPredict. Um, and there are, you can go through NASA, they have some um, platforms available so you can see where the International Space Station is as it moves. Okay, and now we're going to go on over to Amanda. And Amanda, I need someone to unmute your mic in the gymnasium. How about now, Jill? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. You can hear me? All right. Well, hello, everyone. As Jill mentioned, my name is Amanda White, and I am the public outreach manager at the neighboring Green Bank Observatory. But I'm not there today. We're currently live from Green Bank Elementary Middle School in Green Bank, West Virginia. Here with me today is a pod of socially distanced students that have played an active role in learning about the International Space Station and forming questions for our astronaut. Are you all excited about today? You're about to talk to an astronaut. Are you all excited about today? Every classroom here at Green Bank Elementary Middle School is currently tuned in to watch this incredible event take place in their gym. I wanna hear from you all too. Are you excited about today? I think I might've heard them. So um, with the guidance of their science teacher, Ann Smith and supportive principal, Julie Shiflett, these students have spent their last semester learning about space and the International Space Station. 
They've worked really hard to form some great questions for our astronaut today. Um, Matt is going to be Mark Van De High, a NASA astronaut born in Virginia and currently serving as a flight engineer aboard the ISS. He has recently joined Expedition 64 on the space station. During Expedition 64, crew members will grow radishes in a study to better understand plant growth and nutrition. They will conduct cancer therapy research. They will study how mining with microbes might be used on asteroids. And they'll continue research into the effects of microgravity on the heart. So they sound like an awesome crew and I'm really excited to hear the answers that we get today. Today's contact between Green Bay Elementary Middle School and the International Space Station would not be possible without the help from many people. Um, support uh, this distance learning experience is being conducted by Green Bank Elementary Middle School, ARIS, or Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, NASA, and the Eight Rivers Amateur Radio Club. Support for this contact is also come, has also come from the Pocahontas County Board of Education, the Snowshoe Foundation, Green Bank Observatory and the Durban's Lion, Durban Lions Club. So a huge thanks to all of our supporters. So you have met Joel Molesky from the observatory who is behind the scenes making the magic happen. Now you'll meet Sophie who is part of, who has supported the educational efforts of this contact. And she's gonna introduce you to our on the ground technical team from the Eight Rivers Amateur Radio Club that is making all of this possible. Thanks, Amanda. And yes, hi, everybody. My name is Sophie St. George. I work as a STEM educator at Green Bank Observatory. And uh, part of my job is to uh, coordinate camps and lead trainings for educators to pair literacy with science activities. I also help uh, undergraduate students with presentations and activities for uh, virtual classrooms. And we're hoping that this next fall we can get in the classroom uh, to be with you all. Uh, but behind me here is our incredible team of engineers and ham radio operators that I have the privilege to introduce. And we're going to start here with Marty Bloss. Wave hello, Marty. Thank you. Whose call sign is AD8FF. Marty is a program manager at Green Bank Observatory and has really helped to um, organize this event today. He also applied for the contact and made this happen. So we're really excited to have him on board. He is very excited to share uh, all of the different contact systems that students can use to speak with somebody who is hundreds of miles up in space. We also have with us Galen Watts, who is our sound guru, call sign W-A-L-N-A. He's a radio frequency at Green Bank Observatory and has been the radio operator and technical advisor for this project. Um, one of his first and earliest memories is seeing Neil Armstrong actually set foot on the moon. And so he's most excited about actually com communicating with an astronaut who's in space and hopes the students are excited for that also. We have Joe Brandt here. Wave hello, Joe. Yes, thank you. AC8SA is his call sign. And he's a software engineer for the observatory. He um, helps to uh, run the motors as well as point the Green Bank Telescope, which we saw earlier. Just an incredible instrument. And uh, today he's helping us to track the ISS as it moves across the sky. Here also is Rudy. I'm gonna step out of the way so you all can see him. Uh, KD8WPG is his call sign. And Rudy helped with a lot of things like securing funds and sourcing the equipment that we're using here today. Um, he also tested the hardware and software that makes this communication possible and will make it successful. And finally, um, someone who can't be with us here today is uh, Ray Krieger, call sign AD8BC. He's in our VIP section though, listening in um, and making sure he's aware of all the action at home. Uh, he's a software engineer at the observatory and figured out how to control the main contact antenna remotely, um, which is huge. That antenna is up on a snorkel lift in front of me, um, outside of the building, and it is uh, really important that we could be able to do that remotely. So all of these folks uh, were introduced to ham radio from an early age. 
um, in a variety of different ways, but are really excited to share that with the students and hope uh, they are too. And from the sounds of it earlier, these kids are stoked. Thank you, Sophie. What a great team. We're excited to have them on board with us. So here in just a couple of minutes, Green Bank Elementary Middle School student Dylan will begin making the call to astronaut Vandehei. Dylan was selected to make this call because of the incredible amount of enthusiasm that he has shown throughout this entire experience. So we will begin calling just a few minutes, just a couple of minutes before our scheduled contact time. We want to start a little early so that we can connect with them the moment that the ISS rises above the horizon and we can make the most of our contact time with them today. We, uh, we may not get an answer back on the first couple of calls and that is no reason for concern. We will have about 10 minutes of contact time with the astronaut as the ISS travels from horizon to horizon and we'll continue asking questions until the signal disappears. So Jill, it looks like we still have a few minutes before we need to start calling. Or is anybody joining us online? Hi, yeah, um, I'm just gonna get, okay, here I am, ha ha. All right, before we check in with our folks online, I'm gonna play you a really quick video um, introducing Mark Vandehei, uh, showing him on the International Space Station so we can get to know him a little bit better before we make contact. So I'm gonna get ready to share my screen here. So arriving at the space station, something I'll never forget is looking over my left shoulder out the window in the Soyuz, where it was either a view of the Earth or blackness of space. And then all of a sudden I could see a solar array, getting chills even thinking about it right now. It was this beautiful gold, massive. I mean, you, you don't ever train and see a solar array at full scale here. And so there it was, and the Russian commander sitting to my right. I had to really pay close attention, and I was supposed to be too. But as soon as I saw the solar rays, I broke the silence. I said, "Wow!" And he was like, <laughs> "So, so uh, yeah, I was the, I was definitely a rookie. I was excited." The freedom of motion inside of the space station is huge. And then working was busy. It was definitely very busy. Uh, I got up there when a SpaceX. Uh, Dragon spacecraft is docked just because there's a lot of science that requires return and things have to be done in a very specific timeline. It was very fast paced immediately. And the space station is very unique because on the space station, orbit is really a continuous free fall. And because of that, you can have some very unstable structures that might not be able to stay together if you're on the ground. They could stay together on the space station. Flames behave differently because combustion on the ground requires drawing in all these rich gases into the flame because the hot combustion gases go up and away. But there's no up and away on the space station. All directions are equal as far as that's concerned. So that behaves differently. There's all kinds of different phenomena that we can experiment with. That's why it's a wonderful laboratory. Many, many different experiments. Some of those experiments actually have to do with us as the uh, test subjects, because we're trying to understand how to have people safely travel for longer and longer distances too. That's just a sub part of all the science we're doing on the space station. Some people have talked about at some point in the expedition feeling like it's time to go home, but for me, there was always another spacewalk or another vehicle capture that was coming up. So it always felt like Suddenly I was going home and it surprised me. I'm Mark Vandehei and I'm a NASA astronaut. Okay, so pretty cool there. Um, you can follow Mark on Twitter. You saw his uh, call up, his Twitter name there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, hello, Matthew from Norfolk. Hello, Dina in Huntington. Hey, Robert, KC8YSL. Hello, Elaine from Green Bay. Hey, Jan, uh, who's excited for the middle school. Uh, Matthew, KO4KXH. Uh, Mike Holstein, thank you. Hey, Wanda, I love it when you love what we're doing. Um, Dave, W8AAS. Uh, oh, Peggy, hey, Peggy. Uh, Joe, oh, W-D-A-V-G-W, hey, Joe, long time no see. Fayetteville, West Virginia, Tony, nice to see you. Jan, K-E-8-C-O-Z. Uh, Daniel, thank you. 
thank you all so much for all your comments and call signs. All right, Jill, I think I'm gonna steal it back. Yep. And with that, I believe it's time to begin. So Dylan, will you please begin calling astronaut Vanda High aboard the International Space Station? November Alpha, one Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, one Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor, for a scheduled school contact. November Alpha, one Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, one Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor, for a scheduled school contact. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor for a scheduled school contact. <laughs> November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor for a scheduled school contact. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor, for a scheduled school contact. <laughs> November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. November Alpha, 1 Sierra Sierra. From November 8, Romeo Victor, for a scheduled school contact. Uh, November 8, Romeo Victor. This is November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra. I have you loud and clear. The Green Bank School is pleased to welcome astronaut Vanda High to speak with us today. Are you ready for student questions? Over. I am looking forward to student questions. Over. Hi, this is Jade. What made you decide to become an astronaut? Over. The combination of mental challenge phys challenges, physical challenges, as well as the opportunity to serve all of humanity and explore. Over. This is Steven. Is the ISS heated in your Vulcan suit because it's always cold? Over. The ISS is actually very comfortable inside. It's, it's uh, controlled. The temperature is set much like a house, but this time the ground control team sets it for us. So we typically wear short sleeve shirts and pants when we work. Hi, uh, this is Griffin. How often do you have to refill the oxygen tanks from Earth? Over. Griffin, that's a great question. I am not 100% certain of that. I know we've got a slow leak on the space station right now, and just a few days ago, we opened up a couple of air tanks just to make sure we had enough nitrogen inside the space station. But we have an oxygen generation system, so we're able to convert our uh, some of our uh, CO2 back into oxygen. Hi, this is Dylan. Have you ever lost contact with the base? What are you supposed to do if that were to happen? Over. Hi, Dylan. Uh, actually, very routinely, we have what we call a loss of signal or an LOS, where we can't talk to the ground control team. A lot of times it's only for 20 seconds, but sometimes it's uh, uh, 10 minutes. Uh, and if it happens unexpectedly, we do have a procedure to follow to try to reestablish the communication. Hi, this is Florian asking for Aiden. What can you see from the space station that you can't see from Earth? Over. Well, some things I've seen from uh, the space station that I've never seen from the Earth are the thinness of the atmosphere. From outer space, it looks like um, the Earth has just a very delicate, thin layer of atmosphere that we kind of take for granted. Um, also, I've seen meteorites uh, burn up in the atmosphere. Um, just got very fortunate for that. I've seen aurora borealis from space, and it looks like kind of like curtains. Uh, very different looking from uh, the way it looks on the ground. Over. Hi, this is Caden. If you have any downtime, what do you do with it? Over. Caden, great question. Uh, we'd like to have meals together um, once a week along with the entire crew, so with our Russian counterparts as well. Um, once a week, we've been having a movie night. I like to every night read for a little bit to relax so I can actually sleep. And for all of us, taking pictures is something we can't get enough of. Over. 
Hi, this is Ella. What are you allowed to bring to the ISS and what did you choose to bring? Over. We're, we're allowed to bring things that uh, aren't sharp or combustible, much like going on an airplane. Uh, we do have limits on the amount of size that are much smaller. For example, I had a half a kilogram I could bring on the Soyuz spacecraft with me. And I would, uh, I'm not sure how to describe it, probably uh, a third of a carry-on suitcase that I could have had shipped up to the space station for personal items. Uh, my wedding ring is one thing I definitely brought, but otherwise I only brought things that my wife wanted me to take up to space so she could give his presents to other people over. Hi, this is Shayla. How do you solve problems with each other if you get in arguments over? Oh, that's a very, very important thing on the space station. The most important thing is to talk about it. If we are feeling angry with another crew member, we just got to pull them aside privately and, and talk about it and almost always uh, we're able to resolve it uh, successfully. We actually get a lot of training on that, over. Hi, uh, this is Cadence. Does the food go to the top of your mouth when you eat because of microgravity, and does it feel different to eat or drink in space, over? Cadence, that's a fantastic question. I never thought about that. Um, no, it doesn't. I never, I think I, my tongue makes contact with the food quickly enough that I don't notice it floating to the top of your, my mouth. However, I can tell you when I open a food package, for example, rice, if I haven't put, the, put something like olive oil or garlic paste in there, the rice goes flying all over the place. Over. Hi, uh, this is Charlie. What do you, asking for Amber, what do you do about trash? Over. Uh, trash, we uh, have to make sure we collect it because otherwise, just like that rice, it would go floating all over the place. Once it's collected, we have to wait for a spacecraft to put it in to uh, get rid of it. We currently have a Cygnus spacecraft docked to the space station. We are loading that up with as much trash as possible, and then when it departs, it will burn up in the atmosphere. Over. Hi, this is Mackenzie. Is it possible for an animal to be pregnant in space? Over. Mackenzie, great question. I suspect it's possible, but I'm just making a guess. I really do not know of, uh, if what issues there might be with um, pregnancies in space. Hi, this is Willie asking for Gary. Has there ever been a critical failure? What protocols or drills do you have in case one happens? Over. So there are three emergencies, we call them. Um, a rapid depressurization, a uh, ammonia release into the space station, or a fire. Um, I know we've had false alarms for those things. I'm not 100% certain that we've had any for real. and. Although we do have a very slow depress because of the leak I mentioned earlier, and we train for all three of those contingencies a lot. I know on previous space stations, the MERS space station, for example, they did have a fire. Over. Hi, this is Taylor. What are the emotional challenges in space? Over. Um, Taylor, the biggest emotional challenge I have in space is being kind to myself. So when I make a mistake, I, I, it's really easy to beat myself up about it. Um, and get grumpy, I just got to forgive myself and move on to the next thing so I can pay 100% attention to the next thing I got to work on. Over. Hi, this is Olivia asking for Charlie. How is your sleep or work schedule different in space than it would be on Earth? Over. Actually, it's uh, kind of the same. We, the sleep, well, actually, it's a longer work schedule. The sleep schedule, I'd like to get about eight hours of sleep a night, and they schedule that for me on the space station. The work schedule goes from about 7.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night. Over. Hi, this is Allison asking for Trenton. How do you get news from Earth? Were you worried about COVID affecting your support system on the ground? Over. We get news from the Earth from a support team. We have a behavior, health, and performance group that uh, we can tell them what podcasts we like listening to, what magazines we like, and they actually upload those up onto the computers on the space station. Um, and certainly... Um, I'm happy to say that most of my family has been immunized, but uh, that continues to be a concern, And uh, but it's lessening as time goes on and more and more people get immunized over. The Green Bank Elementary Middle School would like to thank astronaut Mark Vandehei, call sign KG5GNP, on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you. Gosh, I'm getting all choked up. Thanks for that. Uh, really great questions today. It's a pleasure to talk to you.
Have a wonderful day. Over. N8 RV over and out. Learning experience conducted by the Green Bank Elementary Middle School, ARIS, Amateur Radio on the International Space Station, NASA, and the Eight Rivers Amateur Radio Club. Our contact today was with astronaut Mark T. Vandehei. Support for the contact has also come from the Pocahontas County Board of Education, the Snowshoe Foundation, the Green Bank Observatory, the Durbin's Lion Club. On behalf of the students and faculty at the Green Bank School, I'm Principal Shiflett thanking you for joining us today. Good morning. Back to you, Jill. Okay, everybody. Oh my gosh, that's it. All the hard work. Um, as you can imagine, with the COVID uh, pandemic, it, this project was even more challenging being in the national radio quiet zone, um, ensuring that all our technology works is also challenging. And this was originally supposed to happen in 2020 and it was postponed until now in 2021. So nearly um, a year and a half, almost two years of work went into this from application to what just happened. So I know I was here cheering. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, we had over 100 folks watching us live on Facebook. That's awesome. We had more people tuning in directly to Zoom and watching on the ARIS YouTube channel. So um, do look for this recording. You can watch it again. I know all the students will be. Um, thank you all again to our sponsors. You can see them over here to the um, side of my face. And uh, yeah, keep, keep tuned in to Pocahontas County, Green Bank, West Virginia, Green Bank Observatory. We have so many cool projects to share with you all. And we really appreciated you joining us today. Thanks again, over and out.